I'm here to talk to you today about a selection of items that we have brought together which all relate to the two disciplines of astronomy and astrology. The study and practice of astronomy was hugely popular in medieval Islamic times. A great number of Persian, Sanskrit and Greek uh, works were translated into Arabic and they, with the craftsmen, brought a, a corpus of scientific and astronomical instruments, many of which survive to the present day. We have two very fine astrolabes in our upcoming sale, uh, and an astrolabe is a multifunctional portable instrument with a variety of uses, uh, with many of the, the great astrolabes being reserved for uh, the highest ranked individuals. And the first of them is from 14th century Spain, from the city of Tudela in northeast Spain, dated 737 Hijri calendar, which equates to 1336 to 37 displaying a very fine Andalusi Kufic script all around the, the reet and the, the throne, and also with these unusual, unique in fact, hexafoil motifs in the bottom section, which are probably an influence from European astrolabes. Our second astrolabe is from Safavid, Iran, some 350 years later. Uh, circa 1660. And we know that this astrolabe was made by two of the foremost astrolabists of 17th century Iran, Muhammad Hussein al-Yazdi, the maker, and then there's an inscription in the bottom uh, of the piece which tells us the name of the decorator who was Muhammad Mahdi al-Yazdi. And you can see the quality of their decoration here on the front with the calligraphy and the finely engraved and punched ground on the reet and the star pointers all together. It just shows that this is an extremely fine piece made for a high-ranking individual. In the wake of the boom in astronomical studies came astrology, also hugely popular in medieval Islamic times. Although sometimes considered controversial, astrology still maintained a popular interest. The astrologers would try to interpret the movement of celestial bodies. There was a belief in the talismanic powers of health, prosperity and good fortune, and often rulers would employ an astrologer to help them predict uh, the future. This large and spectacular rediscovered basin uses the celestial objects, the zodiac signs, as the prime source of the decoration, where you have the five planets surrounded by the 12 signs of the zodiac. On the edge of that are bands of uh, fish, crescent moons, and then above that this impressive frieze of anthropomorphic calligraphy. This basin is one of the finest examples of the silver inlaid metalworking industry of the Eastern Islamic world to have survived to this day. This silver inlaid brass bowl uh, could be described as another everyday functional object, but not one made for an everyday person. The decoration is very sophisticated. Around the edges you have classic 14th century Mamluk Egyptian uh, calligraphy interspersed with figural roundels. But it's underneath that we see, again, the astrological. In the existence of the planets, we've got Saturn, Venus, Jupiter, Mercury sitting around the sun, underscoring the talismanic properties of astrology on the owner. Another everyday functional item, but built to an incredibly high standard and sophistication, is this silver inlaid inkwell. Here we have the signs of the zodiac featured all around the main part of the body, and again on the base. But what's different about this piece is we also have the addition of animals. We've got here these stylized hairs running around the base and the lid, and on the top this this striking design of harpies, which are a kind of human-headed bird around uh, the rim. And if we open uh, the lid of the inkwell, we'll see a familiar inscription inside here on the drip tray, which bestows again the owner with the talismanic properties of glory, wealth, uh, prosperity and good fortune. Objects such as these, with this level of refinement and condition, appear on the market very rarely. So when they do, they provide uh, institutions and private collectors with an opportunity to acquire something truly extraordinary.